Hello, uh, welcome back to my channel. Uh, this time I'm going to uh, focus a little bit on the um, race builds. So once again, I'll be going back to the uh, Pathfinder um, and race, advanced race guide. So uh, what I'm going to do today is um, talk about the uh, Formian. Uh, they are featured in Bestiary 4. It's about time. I've been waiting to see these for quite a while. <clears throat> I've seen quite a few of these in the past from like D&D and such. Um, there was the Thride Crean, more of a mantis, uh, mantis insectoid uh, creature from like uh, Dark Sun. And then of course the uh, Formian and then the Thride Crean. Uh, they can be seen also in like you know D and D, Forgotten Realms. I think a little bit of a spell jammer. So finally, we get them in ba uh, Pathfinder, and uh, in the Bestiary Four, there was quite a few different types of them, uh, different case. So you got the um, Mirror Mark, the Queen, Taskmaster, the Warrior, and the Worker. So I try to take most of those as I could and have them as optional builds when you are uh, creating your own Formian uh, race, either as the GM or uh, if your GM allows it, uh, selecting which type of uh, racial build that you want to do. So instead, I, I've introduced a couple of different types of builds rather than traits. Um, so, get into that now. Um, if you're unaware of what formians are, um, a centaur-like ant would be maybe an appropriate description of it. Um, what they describe in Beastier 4 is that the uh, formians are a spacefaring race of insect-like creatures from a forest world, and they aggressively colonize other worlds. When dealing with other creatures, the formians recognize that their telepathy can be off-putting and attempt to use normal speech. Although their mandibles are not well suited for the task and their voices are often hoarse and difficult to understand. Formians engrave their chitin with an insignia, insignia depicting their rank, foes overcome, and notable deeds or accomplish, accomplishments that are carved into their carapaces or carapaces. Um, they're highlighted with the use of bright inks, precious metals, or gems. All Formians are ster sterile, uh, although in rare circumstances they spontaneously become fer fertile after the death of their queen. So it suggests that they're all female, but you can choose to make them male and female sterile, except for, you know, of course, the queen. Uh, However you want to do that, that's fine. And it seemed, based on what was in there, detailed under that uh, race, they live somewhere around 20 years or so, depending on which uh, ant worker sort of case you're in. Um, different uh, type of workers and such, so it just depends. Um, you know, you may have a little bit more of a... Um, advanced age in there or not, but for the most part it looks like it's uh, not for very long. So one thing about these, um, to start off with, um, I tried to take, I tried to mirror them just as they are presented in Bestiary 4, uh, just more in a PC fashion. So the Formian uh, total ratio point starts off at 20. The type, they are a monstrous humanoid, so that gives them three racial points. Size, medium, for the most part, uh, there's a majority of them that are listed in the BCR4 as medium. Uh, there's a couple that are large and uh, one that's small. So medium seem to be the norm for it. Uh, so that's zero racial points. Ability score modifiers, I went with specialized, so it's uh, plus two to strength. Plus two to con and minus two to charisma. So that's uh, one racial point cost there. Languages, one was standard, so zero RP. 
And then I went through with the racial traits. Natural armor, given, you know, their chitin-like exoskeleton, uh, that would, you know, grant them some sort of armor bonus. So I just went with just the plus one. So that's a natural armor uh, with two racial points there. And now on to the feet and skill racial traits. Um, all of the Formians interact through like a hive mind. So what I did, um, I used the um, under the feet and skill racial traits. I had to kind of kind of come up with something to uh, sim uh, sim sim uh, simulate that. So let me just get to that here. And I uh, can kind of talk about that a little bit. One moment, please. Um, let's see here. Where are you? Where are you? Okay. So it looks like I kind of did some sort of homebrew and modified it. I did something with quick reactions plus a skill bonus. So if I go down to that just to kind of interpret that, what I wrote there. Um, they get the improved initiative and a plus two racial bonus to perception. Okay, so yeah, that's what that's what I did there. So I gave them um, um, part of a feat and part of a skill bonus to kind of go with that. Um, what is that hive mind that I'm talking about? Uh, just to kind of go into that. Uh, let's see here. Basically, when one of them sees you in like a hive, if they're near the hive, then um, all of them are uh, alerted to your presence. So they have that sort of a hive mind where they're more alert. Uh, they're more in tune with the uh, senses and stuff so they can react and perceive more. So I try to emulate that as best I could. to talk about that. They do describe in here certain things with like telepathic feedback, hive frenzy and things like that. Um, they can deliver commands through uh, tele uh, te uh, telepathy when they're near the hive and uh, a large body of the other uh, for uh, formians. So, on to the next one. We got uh, claws. I went for offensive racial trait, gave them claws. Uh, most of them do have claws. I think there was one that only had a bite. Uh, so I just went with the majority of the features across the board of all the different types there. And then on to sense, senses of racial traits. Um, they all have dark vision. And they automatically gain that for free because uh, it's included within the monstrous humanoid type. Um, and then I added blind sense. They all have a feature of blind sense. So I went with 30 feet on that. That's listed in the uh, race builder section here. So that's four racial points. And then other racial traits, uh, quadruped. They do have four legs. And looks like I modified that slightly. I don't think that's supposed to be modified. Take a look at that. Okay. It mentioned something about that they have to be large in size, so I just kind of modified that. Uh, I wanted them to say medium. So they possess four legs, 
and have two arms. And um, what is that essentially if you uh, decide to make a quadruped uh, race? Well, they get uh, four racial bonus to their CMD against trip attempts and a plus 10 foot bonus to their base speed. Um, you can increase the number of legs by two for each additional uh, point in the racial points and that will grant them uh, an increase to their CMD against trip attacks but no other boons. Um, so I just want the standard there so um, it's two. So I think the only modification I made on that was that I uh, took off the prerequisite of them having to be large. Other racial traits uh, within there, uh, telepathy. All I've seen from Pathfinder, um, I saw in the Inner Sea Bestiary that there was a race called the Lashuta or something like that. It's a alien race. You'll probably notice them with they have the, like the two stalks, uh, antennae, antenna things on under under forehead. Uh, they have a thing in there listed under their little race build block there that they have limited limited telepathy and it's a range of 30 feet and it has to be uh, a chosen language of their own and they weighted that as uh, three racial points so I wanted them to have 60 feet at least and the race builder doesn't uh, showcase that so I use a modification and just make my own so I just increased the range, I doubled the range actually, to 60 feet, and I gave it one more point in the race build, or race point I should say, so a uh, total of four points. For type of feet, telepathy to uh, 60 feet. And as I mentioned uh, at the beginning of this video almost, uh, I did talk about racial builds for these, to try and uh, take on the characteristics of the different types like the workers, the warriors, the taskmasters and such. Uh, so, the first one, I made this one called the Honored Sting. So that's basically a uh, representation of the warrior caste. So, uh, how do I represent that? Well, uh, I gave them a paralytic venom through the toxic ability listed in here for one racial point and then I also added a natural attack with their, uh, with a sting so they do have a stainer so they can use that to make attacks so you get both of those for choosing the honored sting rate, uh, racial build you could if you feel more comfortable you can call it a racial trait if you want uh, so that's a total cost of two, having both of those abilities stacked in there. And if you go that route, then you will have to uh, remove or have it replace natural armor at a two point cost, just so you can stay at the 20 um, RP build there. The next one I did outcast cased. Uh, basically their stainer was ripped off and uh, any insignias, uh, distinguished recognitions on there, uh, achievements, uh, notable deeds and such uh, have been gouged out of that sort of chin-like plates on, on their side where they would note those deeds. Those have all been gouged out, it's been branded as an outsider and cast out of its hive. So I gave them the eternal hope um, that is from the race builder section and I believe that let me see if I can find that just so I can talk about that yep, internal hope uh, what is that? it's two racial points you could use that to replace the na uh, natural armor and eternal hope members of the race gain a plus two racial bonus on saving throws against fear and despair effects. Also, once per day, after a natural roll of uh, one on a D20 roll, members of this race may re-roll any use and use the second result. So, uh, 
haven't gone through despair, fear, anguish, uh, being cast out, the unknown, and then having to survive that. I would imagine some sort of resounding hope, a renewed uh, sense of purpose maybe met on the way through adventurers and such, uh, finding some sort of uh, life goal maybe. So maybe through all those trials, uh, they receive a, a enormous enlightenment and thus gain uh, saving throw against fear and despair since they have gone through these things and have persevered through, through them. So I thought the internal hope sound, sounded best for that. So uh, I went with that. And then one I just added today is... Uh, Kind of just a flare or spark of ma imagination hit me out of nowhere and I thought of this one. Because um, I wanted something... This one's called the Peerless Bearer. Since they're ants, you know, that spell Ant Hall. Uh, very... Um, has a very branded name to that. Ants, ant race. Shouldn't they be able to carry a heavy load? And the worker race or the worker cased in the for forming section of Beastie 4, there is one that actually has something like that. It gives them like a plus five to their uh, strength, but only when determining uh, encum encumbrance and such weight. Um, so I wanted to uh, give this uh, proper acknowledgement to that, so if they decide to play something more of a worker type rather than a warrior, that, that it can go with this type of build or, or trait. So the peerless bearer. And how do you represent that? Um, I try not to make anything too homebrew, too modified, just because I want to try and stay true to the race builder and try to keep a balance always in place so that nothing's overpowered, nothing's spontaneously uh, crazy and out of the normal uh, realm of, you know, the uh, spotlight. So I try to keep everything um, within the certain tier as as as, as it shows with the uh, race power level build thing with the uh, advanced and mo uh, monstrous types. So I don't like to go too high. So um, what I did, of course, I homebrewed it. Uh, I took the went to the magic uh, traits section under the advanced and there's one in here called constant spell like divination and it gives you a thing where you can choose one of the following spells such as detect magic, detect, detect poison, detect secret doors, detect undead this race can use one of these spells as a constant spell like ability so I thought, perfect, you know what, I'm going to call this instead of divination, it's going to be um, constant spell-like transmutation. And basically transmutation, the ant hall spell. So, they can uh, use ant hall as a constant spell-like uh, ab ab yeah, ability. Uh, so, that's a racial point cost of two. Uh, normally it's supposed to be three, but since you only get to choose one spell, I didn't think it was needed to put a three weighted co uh, cost on there, so I just went with two. So trying to stay on a sort of even uh, line here, not going too far to the left, too far to the right, in terms of you know weakness and, and strength. So that's all I got for that. So. Uh, now I'll just kind of run through what you would normally find when you happen to look in uh, a race section and you get to see the pure uh, statistical inf information for it rather than just going with uh, race traits, defense traits and such. So uh, converting that all over into an easy uh, mater material to digest. We'll go with... Uh, the norm of it now, the forming racial traits. When selecting a forming as a race, 
So uh, plus two to strength, plus two to constitution, minus two to charisma. Formians are hardy and powerful, but are inherently strange and unnerving. Medium. Formians are typically medium creatures and have no bonuses or penalties due to their size. Heightened speed. Formians have a base speed of 40 feet rather than 30 since they possess four legs. Superior senses. Formians can see in the dark up to 60 feet and have blind sense up to 30 feet. Claws. Formians have two claw attacks. These are primary natural attacks dealing 1d4 damage. Chitin plates. Formians have tough exoskeletons which grants a plus one bonus to natural armor class. Hive Mind. Whenever you are in telepathic range with another Formian, you gain improved initiative and a plus two racial bonus to perception. You are, however, susceptible to any effects if you are near the hive. Um, just quite a, kind of going on a side note here. I would imagine if you receive commands from a hive, if you're within telepathic range, uh, it would be quite hard to resist those. So, as a GM, you can throw up some will saves and see if they kind of fall under some effect, like uh, command creature or something like that. Uh, hold monster, uh, some kind of spell. Similar to that, you can create a spell-like effect using you know all the various different types of spells um, to do that. So, in a side note, uh, back to this. Quadruped. Formians possess four legs and two arms, granted them a plus four bonus to their CMD against trip attempts. Formians are adversely affected by their ability to use standard feet slot magic items. So, GM note here, the best way to deal with this is to create variant magic item versions of the various boots, shoes, and slippers that are approved by your GM. So your GM should allow you to find ankle bracelets of speed, uh, horseshoes of spider climb that act just like their traditional magic item counterparts, but fit the new race's form. So that's one small challenge. Uh, just remember to uh, integrate uh, foot slot items that the Formians can use. Uh, one that makes sense because they have four legs, so. I don't think you want them to be kind of uh, galloping or uh, sort of trudging along where uh, they're trying to keep up with one foot that's sort of uh, out of pace with the other ones. Uh, telepathy. A forming is able to mentally communicate with any creature within 60 feet with whom it shares a language. Otherwise, disabilities is identical to the telepathy ability. Languages. Formians begin play speaking common. Formians with high intelligence scores can choose from the following. Draconic, Dwarven, Giant, Goblin, Terran, and Undercommon. So this is kind of a nice race that you can feature maybe in the Underdark uh, or slightly above with hills and tunnels and such, mountains. So I kind of threw in a little bit of Draconic, Dwarven, Giant, Goblin, Terran, Undercommon, certain races that they would probably encounter and would have dealings with and such. Alright. Now on to the alternate racial builds. Kind of putting this more into an English-like format, easily to interpret and understand, especially if you're not uh, used to reading what's in the race build section, not used to in, in interpreting that. Honored Sting, an exceptional and perhaps old warrior with years of service to the Hive, who has left the Hive with Stinger intact to carry out a failed mission rather than choose voluntary starvation. Perhaps you are just part of the Taskmaster case, acting as a merchant, trader, diplomat, or spy. You still have your Stainer and work outside of the hive, engaging in routine commerce or diplomatic missions. You have a stinger that has a primary natural attack, dealing 1d4 damage plus poison. The poison can be used a number of times per day, equal to your constitution modifier, minimum of one a day. 
The toxin that you can inject is a paralytic venom. It can also be applied to a weapon as a swift action. The Fortitude save DC is 10 plus half your hit dice plus your constitution modifier. The poison's frequency is once per round for 6 rounds with an effect of 1d2 dexterity damage and cure of 1 save. This racial build replaces natural armor. The next one. Outcast Cased. For whatever reason, you have left the hive and are a liberated thinker. Disgraced, your stain was torn away, and your markings were gouged out. Despite this, you carry on in the face of fear and despair. As such, you gain a plus two racial bonus on saving throws against fear effects and despair effects. Also, once per day, after a natural roll of one on a d20 roll, you may re-roll and use the second result. This racial build replaces natural armor. Last, Peerless Bearer. You belong to the backbone of the hive. As a worker, you are able to bear remarkable burdens of your size. Yeah, I should say, for your size. You can use the Ant Hall spell on yourself as a constant spell-like ability. The caster level of this spell-like ability is equal to your character level. This racial build replaces claws. So that's what I got for the uh, race here. Um, if you want with the Peerless Bearer, you can, you know, as, as it shows, um, it takes away claws. And if you want, you can give it a bite. It's only one more point for the uh, racial build. So you're taking it from a 20 to a 21. It's not too big of a deal. The worker uh, case, they do have a bite attack. They don't have any claws because uh, they're mainly used for digging and such. So they're not really sharp. They're not uh, trained for uh, warfare and combat. Um, I went with a Formian feat. I'm starting to go through and make racial feats and teamwork feats and such. So here's one I made. Mental Motivator. It's a Formian feat. The prerequisite, you have to be Formian. And you have to have Charisma of 15. The benefit of this feat, you grant any Formian within your telepathic range a plus two morale bonus to saving throws versus fear effects. So you're kind of using that hive mind again. But this is limited to Formians. That's the only thing. Um, or what you can do, you can take out the Formian uh, and just list it as telepathic range with anyone that shares your language. So that's um, your um, comrades, adventurers and such can be uh, benefit from this. So there's that. And then I also made a Formian Racial Teamwork Feat. This one is called Coordinate. It's a teamwork feat, as I said. The prerequisite, you have to be uh, for, uh, Formian. And the benefit. Once a Formian has acted in combat, all allied Formians within the hive mind are no longer considered flat-footed. When a Formian warrior attacks a creature in melee, Allied Formians gain a plus two insight bonus on melee attack rolls against that creature until the start of the warrior's next turn. So there's that one. It's more of a racial um, teamwork feat for just the racial uh, type of creatures. The Formians, you can choose to take that off and just make it for telepathic range, uh, for adventures and such. I kind of have a little bit of indecision about uh, those two right now. So that's really all I got. The only thing I could, else I could possibly add, uh, looking at Beastary 4, there is that Taskmaster. And uh, they can be found particularly talented and even advising the Queen. They are normally outside of the hive. And, uh... They can be seen bleeding a bunch of the for formings and such. 
normally they have a work crew or a band or embassy and such um, maybe to showcase that that forming was particularly a strong leader within the hive that led a bunch of formings maybe they were a drill instructor or uh, some sort of official that designated uh, tasks or jobs and such um, if you want you can try to create a uh, racial archetype and I would call it the taskmaster and I would use um, Wright Publishing's Cavalier Archetype, which is called the Inspiring Commander. Uh, you can find that, find that on the D20 PFSRD site. Uh, you can just type in Inspiring uh, Commander, and uh, it shows you a lot of different uh, commands that you can issue to your allies. Um, teamwork feats, some bard-like abilities, um, so I would change the Inspiring Commander name and replace that with Taskmaster. And then you can have more, you can put more of a uh, theme to it with it being with ants and such. So, it's the only problem is you have to determine whether you want to limit it to just it, that race. Or if they take some of those qualities um, of what they learn and use within the hive mind, within the hive so, uh, so society if they can implement and put that in effect to their uh, different race uh, different race party members and such and kind of implement some of those uh, skill skill sets so uh, that's up to you I'm still kind of looking through all this this all this that I kind of go over today is just um, a rough draft version of the uh, for, uh, Formian race. So um, I tried to keep it as true as I could to B Series 4, and I think I was pretty spot on with it. Uh, you got, you know, a couple of different types to choose based on what's uh, presented in B Series 4. So um, I'm definitely gonna um, make this available to my group. I've always liked the uh, ant race. I thought they were really exceptional in some of the novels that I read from Forgotten Realms and a couple others that I can't really remember. But just very alien uh, like. So I would definitely make this a alien race that particularly uh, uh, inhabited uh, Galarian and is now uh, trying to colonize parts of it. So that's all I got. Um, any questions, comments, whatever, let me know. Um, I'll be happy to get with you on that. Thanks.